the way we do the an analysis here or investigation is that we try to do it in a more contemplative way, you know, not like thought processes uh, too much, you know. Even though cont- you know, contemplative analysis is still some kind of thought processes, but it's a disciplined thought processes. And so you analyze, <clears throat> like you analyze the cause, you analyze the condition, you analyze like how it's arising. So it's more like kind of like basic information. And then when you see your mind going beyond that, with some kind of like storyline, you know, and storyline or event and things like that, then you must stop there. You know, do not follow any kind of storyline there. We just try to find the basic information of, okay, when he says this, you know, then it triggers my emotion. Or when this person does this, or when I think of that, and so forth. And just like that point, you know, and then we can stop there for now <clears throat> and work with that as a mindfulness reference point, uh, reminder. That's one thing. <clears throat> the other thing we do is, uh, like, we use analytical meditation, right? Analytical meditation. <clears throat> so we sit in the shamatha, uh, basic shamatha, <clears throat> basic calmness <clears throat> for a while, and within that we investigate one emotion, right? Within that you investigate one let's say one trigger point or one emotion for a few minutes and then when you see your mind getting too like involved, grasping or when your mind becoming too, what you call, <clears throat> uh, discursive instead of investigative. You know, there's two differences. These are two differences. Discursive and investigative. So it's, when it's getting too discursive, you come back to breathing. Come back to breathing meditation, shamatha, and then after a little bit, then you investigate again. 